Thank you, Chairman, and welcome to both of the witnesses. Um, let me start by uh, saying that we've heard a great deal in the course of this hearing about uh, rural infrastructure. Um, I'd like to focus a little bit on coastal infrastructure. America has coasts, and some of us represent states that have coasts. And along those coasts, we are seeing very serious predictions of very considerable sea level rise, including predictions that continue to come from the federal government under this administration. Um, working with NOAA, Rhode Island is looking at as much as nine feet of vertical sea level rise by the end of the uh, century. If that were to happen, Amtrak is gone through Connecticut. Uh, the map of my state would have to be redrawn. A uh, considerable amount of our wastewater infrastructure, which tends to be low because of where it stands in the gravity flow, uh, has to be relocated. Uh, coastal highways, coastal evacuation uh, zones, flood maps, there's an enormous amount of work that has to be done to prepare for what we now have been told very strongly by uh, the federal government is coming at us. So I'm a little bit um, concerned that the words like coastal or sea level rise or storm surge, things that we have to live with and prepare for don't appear in the infrastructure plan. And I'm hoping that as we develop this plan, you will be accommodating of that fact and of our coastal state's needs that infrastructure be designed, redesigned, maybe even relocated for the foreseeable prospect of that kind of damage. Senator, you and I have talked about this uh, issue. I know that it is highly important to use. So I think your constituents may not be the should only also one. know there are a bunch that you of have brought this coastal. up many times with me. Yes. I had not thought about that, so let me take a look at the uh, line. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to have there be a little reflex in your mind whenever you hear rural that you also think, yeah, rural and coastal, rural and coastal, rural, oh, and coastal. Um, and on the core, we're unfortunately not much better off, uh, Mr. James. The core's proposed FY19 budget asks for about a billion and a half, 1.481 billion to be exact, for its flood and coastal storm damage reduction program. Out of that $1.48 billion, we can identify $40 million that is marked for coastal projects. And the remaining $1.44 billion is marked for inland projects. When you look at what's coming at our coasts, when you're looking at what NOAA is telling us to expect, when you're looking at what the Department of Defense is telling us to expect, when you're looking at the preparations the Navy has to make for its Navy bases, it's really hard for me to understand why there has to be a 37 to 1 ratio in favor of inland projects over coastal projects. How do you defend that to coastal states? Uh, sir, I remember discussing this with you during. Yeah, I can be like a bad penny. I keep turning up on this stuff. <laughs> during my confirmation hearing. But I think uh, I one have... of my colleagues would be equally exercised if an essential feature of their state were overlooked completely by a factor of 37 to 1. Well, my answer to you on, on the, that suggestion is that it's not 37 to 1. It may be 37 to 1 of the entire dollars, but all of the projects are processed and considered the same, whether they be coastal or uh, inland. So that tells me there's just a lot more inland projects that require flood damage assistance than coastal. Well, what I don't want to be in is a position in which the budget doesn't authorize funding for coastal projects, that it's 40 million out of 1.4 billion, with the result that 
people don't apply because they look at that budget and say, it says in huge letters to coastal communities, not welcome here. So they maybe aren't participating because they take a look at this and they say, oh my gosh, this is all for inland and upland stuff. That's an invitation for us to stay away. And I don't want to be in a situation in which we're not getting projects in because of the budget, and then you're saying, well, that's because there are not enough projects in there. There's a circularity to that argument that leaves coastal communities uh, in real trouble. And I don't think coastal projects should be second-class citizens in your budget by this kind of a factor of 37 to 1. I know the Mississippi is important. I know that it floods. I know that there are upland floods in other places. But for crying out loud, when you're looking at nine coming feet of sea level rise along our coasts, there's a lot of infrastructure work that needs to be done to prepare for that. And I hope that you will find a way to send a signal to your organization and to coastal communities that coastal projects are in fact welcome here and are in fact a key, a critical part of the Army Corps' task. I have no problem with that. I, but that's, that wasn't my personal thinking to begin with. I was just trying to explain to you that if, if we had 100 flood risk damage reduction projects in this country, and 50 of them were coastal and 50 of them were inland, from what I understand right now, those, it would be equal uh, application to those two areas. Uh, well, we'll see. I don't I, know what the signal is from the budget, and I just want to close by saying I appreciate very much that I, I do not ascribe this to you. I do not think you personally have any distaste for coastal projects. We've talked our way through this before. I have full confidence in your personal judgment. But the Army Corps is a big bureaucracy, and 37 to 1 is a very big signal in a budget. And I'll just leave it at that. Thank well, you. Well, Senator Whitehouse, as important as it is to you, I will get with the chief and uh, his, his team, and I'll get with my team, and, and uh, let me get back with you I appreciate if I've that. said anything that's not right or if I was right. Let I me make sure. No, you've been great to work with. Let Thank me you. make sure. Senator Sullivan. Uh, 